This is the main thing we're going to look at today, which is the orchards around this. Today we had Martin Hayes come, who is an orchardist, one of the many experts that we've been lucky enough to have come and shed their light on the walled garden. This is empty and should clearly go back to orchard, so it's within the wall and it's really key. I'm going to take you up this way just so you can see some of these pieces, which are so beautiful. This is the bottom of the series of ponds. Okay, yeah. So we're coming up onto the gate. How beautiful is this all sitting wow, just, just like, sitting there waiting yeah, for you, isn't it? Oh, blimey, it's massive, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> there were 49, 49 gardeners, gardeners at one point, yeah. And you can see how it just slightly slopes the whole thing? Yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's what you need is the drainage. Yeah. Martin was incredible at sharing his expertise and explaining how central the orchards were to life hundreds of years ago. A lot of the big homes, because they had so much manpower, they could literally chase disease out. So if trees got disease, they could just take cuttings and keep going ahead to try and get away from the problems. Wow. When we plant an orchard, we always have to guard them against rabbits and deer, but mainly rabbits is the biggest killer of these young trees. Plum trees, if you get a group of them together, they talk to each other underground. The first sap rise is sweet, and the rabbits love that. So one of them gets attacked and it tells all the others, go to the second metabolic, sour, bitter. That's why when you get clumps of them, they don't get attacked by rabbits. But if you've got a single one that you've planted, it'll get attacked by rabbits because it hasn't got that connection underground. There's just a tremendous amount of wisdom in the positioning of the garden to make sure that it maximized growing. There's so much I didn't realize. I didn't realize that an apple is almost always grafted onto a rootstock because you don't know, you can't just grow an apple from a, from a seed because you don't know what you're going to You don't know get. where you're going to okay, get. That's new information yeah, to me. Yeah. Well, everything's grafted now. I had no idea. 48 years of experience. Yes, you know. there you go. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you have no ideas. You wouldn't ask me in. <laughs> <laughs> it really does take time to deeply understand all this. I really do believe that in the end, what we will end up with is it will be so much more significant and so much more meaningful, given the fact that we're taking the time to really restore it in a very authentic and historically accurate way. I think this is lovely for an orchard. To see this garden here and the size of it, the sheer size of it, it just shows how big and important place this was. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. How long do you think it'll last? How long, have we put this orchard in now. Right, so 170 years for apple. Wow, okay. are you kidding? And then they'll start to degenerate, yeah. but things will grow from that. So okay. bits will grow, so the tree might fall 170 down. 170 years. 170. Wow. Perry pears, wait mm. for it, 300 years. Wow. Perry pear. That is really exciting. I didn't realize it that lasts that long. 170 years. That's really an exciting legacy thing to put back. Get all the latest news from Althorpe delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up at spencer1508.com.